What can we do to stop the missile defense plan of the United States and NATO? Um, well, that's a very good question. <laughs> and like, we're doing what we can to, first of all, we have to make people realize what the situation is. Many people don't know about missile defense. They don't know what it means. They don't recognize it as being part of a possible uh, first strike system where once the first strike has happened that can knock out a lot of missiles on the other side then it can mop up any kind of very small retaliation from uh, the results of that first strike. So people don't recognize, they see, they think of it as a defense system not as part of an offensive system and this is what we have to make sure that people understand. Um, and then it's because it's kind of remote to people, they don't see the, the, the various places. We have two bases in, in Britain which are part of that system. One is uh, Filingdales, RAF Filingdales, which is an early warning radar, which is plugged into the US missile defense system. And the other one is, Miss, is Menwith Hill. Uh, both of these are in Yorkshire, where I live. I don't know why Yorkshire is chosen so much, but uh, uh, then Menwith Hill is also an enormous spy base for the United States. It's an NSA base where they, uh, they, they basically um, co uh, uh, intercept people's um, communications, electronic communications of any form uh, go through Men Menwith Hill that where they're sorted, they're uh, searched for various things and then some of them are sent back to the United States for further intelligence investigation. And that maybe that will come up in another question too because recently we discovered that the role of Menwith Hill is even wider than we thought. It's now pretty obviously part of drone targeting and, and um, targeted killings that the US is involved in as well. So it kind of brings the UK, the missile defense and Menwith Hill and those kind of activities bring the UK more and more in line and entrapped really into the US defense system and we would really like us to move away from all of that altogether, uh, of course. So we have, in, uh, in fact just yesterday, there was a demonstration at uh, Filingdales um, with uh, Kate Hudson, the General Secretary of CMB, was speaking and we also had other speakers including um, somebody who came all the way from Ramstein campaign in Germany, the closed Ramstein. Because again, we want to show the connection between some of these bases in the U UK with other bases, like Ramstein, which is the headquarters of NATO uh, missile defense in Europe. So um, there is a really close connection there, which we want to emphasize and get people to realize the extent of these kind of programs that the US is pushing. Yes, the, the vote in Parliament uh, for Trident it was a, a disappointment. We, we knew that the vote would probably go through, but the, the amount of opposition we'd hoped was it would be a bit more, a bit, bit stronger. But I think it's a product of the fact the Labour Party was in a bit of a disarray at the time and arguing with itself. But anyway, um, we, yes, of course, our struggle doesn't finish there. We, we, uh, it, it's a huge waste of money still. It's still going to suck money away from the things that people really need, a welfare state. They need health, they need education, they need all of those things that are being denied at the moment because of, anti because of austerity measures, so-called austerity measures that are being introduced. So, yes, we will continue to point that out. It's, not too, it's never too late to cancel those kind of programs. Um, so we will still be keep working. The, the debate in Parliament was not really well informed, it was not a particularly deeply thought out debate, it was just we're going to do this um, and then somebody saying well please don't do it and that was about it really. So it's also going to be difficult to implement if the vast majority of people in Scotland where the nuclear weapons are held are really still very much objecting to it. So there are still lots of problems for the government, I think, um, even if they go ahead with this thing. So, uh, yeah, we'll continue, of course, and we'll continue with the same things that we've been doing. We're highlighting the costs still, the effects on uh, global uh, abolition of nuclear weapons, because it's an escalation, really, in Britain of their nuclear weapon system. 
and we need to make sure that people understand that and the, how that's holding up the, the whole idea of getting rid of nuclear weapons from the world entirely. The major one is nuclear uh, disarmament and our focus on that is the UK nuclear weapons because that's the UK's contribution, if that you can call it that, to nuclear weapons. But we also ha have got these campaigns against the bases, the military bases, the US um, and NATO bases that are in, in the UK. So that, as well as Memworth Hill and Finingdale's that I mentioned, there's also um, one at Crowton, which is a huge intelligence base as well that the US runs and, and helps to control and direct the military, uh, the US military uh, around the world, or in Europe anyway. And, and we also think there's a link now, again, with Ramstein base in Germany. Um, I mentioned about Memworth Hill, that, that, the role of that base there, uh, not only surveillance, uh, but also actively participating in targeting uh, and of course we have drones as well, uh, armed drones. Britain has a number of armed drones it's been using in Afghanistan and uh, there's a big campaign um, for, uh, against drones and we're, we are part of that campaign. I hope there's a, uh, a, a, there's a, ba a couple of bases in the UK and places where the drones are being built. So there's a number of places we can actually focus activity on. And generally, sort of, there's another, I mean, anti-NATO, of course, because NATO is such an aggressive force in the world. And we know that there will be a summit next year in uh, Belgium, in um, Brussels, uh, where they're opening the new headquarters, NATO headquarters. And we aim to be there with the rest of the no to war, no to NATO uh, coalition to, to protest and give alternatives to what should be doing rather than militarization of um, uh, of things like NATO has. And the Prime Minister, Theresa May, saying that she would push the nuclear button, uh, people fell into two categories. One people was thinking that, oh, that's, that's of course she should. And the, I think the majority of people thinking, well, what does that mean? That means thousands, perhaps even millions of people will die as a consequence. So it did get a lot of publicity, especially after the, I mean, the fairly bad publicity, really, astonishingly, that uh, Jeremy Corbyn had when he said he wouldn't push the button. People were, the, the press, the media, were saying, well, this is ridiculous. How can you have a nuclear weapon system but refuse to use it? And in fact, that's exactly the point. <laughs> that's exactly the point. You can't use it, so there's no point having it. And he was right on the button, uh, as we say, uh, even though he wouldn't push it. So um, that was a really good statement for him to make. And it created, again, a discussion and a debate around what it means to have nuclear weapons. Again, people forget or don't realize, young people uh, are only just starting to realize because of the campaigns about the humanitarian effects of nuclear weapons. They're only starting to realize that these aren't just ordinary weapons. These are something different, something special that will actually destroy millions of civilian lives if they're ever used. So it's, I think it's a, a shame, it's, it's a shameful uh, statement to make that you would actually push, she, she almost seemed like she would enjoy the whole process of pushing the button to destroy all those lives. I think that's quite shameful and I think that's what we're going to focus on too. That the, the, If you push these buttons, if you use nuclear weapons, it has devastating effects, not just on people, on the environment. It could cause a nuclear winter, it could kind of ex cause extinctions of some species even. I mean it's a terrible thing to think about. We should remove that threat altogether. Uh, so that we don't have to worry about all of those kind of things. We've got other things to worry about, like climate change and things. So um, this is the yeah, this is the this is the main focus of our work really, to indicate to people what it means to have nuclear weapons, what kind of things they can expect if they're ever used. Um, 
Um, so, of course, uh, we know now that uh, there will be an attempt in the United Nations to, um, to put forward a ban treaty, so to, a treaty to ban nuclear weapons from, from the Earth. And uh, that's a fantastic step forward. I don't think at the moment we will get nuclear weapon states to sign it. There will, there will all be non-nuclear weapon states. But um, that will create some pressure, hopefully. I think the idea is to create the pressure on the nuclear weapon states that they feel isolated, that they'll feel they'll perhaps even have a conscience about what they're actually doing. Um, so it's a really good start. It's, it's a sign that people uh, ma the majority of people of the world are fed up with the current system, the current state where there are nuclear weapons that are threatening their lives and threatening the, the, wor the world, in fact, uh, and they want something done about it. And there's been talk and talk and talk and talk and nothing's happened in, with regard to nuclear disarmament. But this is the time now where people have said we've had enough. We want things to change. We want you nuclear states to get rid of your nuclear weapons. We're fed up with being held hostage by those nuclear weapons. So, you know, this is what we're saying. We're the majority of the world. Do it. Do something about it. And that can only be good.